Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. On recent programs, you've witnessed the amazing prophetic anointing on the life of Brian Karn as he's given the word of the Lord to individuals in several Benny Hinn services. I see you receiving a major phone call. The last four digits are 9865. Huh? That's my phone call. That's your? My, my cell phone number. That's your cell phone number. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell, look like I heard Janet. What's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. I see there is a stronghold that fights all the women in your family where they suffer from a certain condition. But the Spirit of the Lord said that condition will have no place in your life this day. All right, you healed. All right, take it. God bless On today's you. program, Brian Karn presents a prophetic word for your life as he teaches how you can activate an Issachar anointing to understand the times and seasons in these last days. Welcome to This Is Your Day. I'm so honored to be on here. My name is Prophet Brian Karn, and Pastor Benny Hinn asked me to fill in today and minister to so great a people. And it is an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to minister and to talk to you about what is on the mind of God. The Bible lets us know in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10 declares, but he has revealed it by his spirit. Ephesians 4 and 11 declares, and he gave some apostles. Then he gave some prophets. Well, that's my office. That's what God has called me to be in the body of Christ. He's called me to be a prophet, to minister. What is a prophet? A prophet is that one who speaks the mind of God. He tells you what God is saying. What is the Lord saying? God doesn't want us to be ignorant of his devices, and he's raised up people in the fivefold ministry. Some people call it fivefold, others call it fourfold, because if you're a pastor, you're a teacher. But I'm the prophet. I, I, I'm the prophet. I'm that prophet, that, that person to whom God has assigned to speak to you, to tell you what is on the mind of God. And I want you to know today that you're on God's mind. Jeremiah 29 to 11 declares, for I know my thoughts that I think towards you. Their thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's to give you an expected end. No matter how confusing my life is, no matter how much distress I'm going through, to know that God has not forgotten about me, to know that he hears me. Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Just to know that he hasn't forgotten me, just to know that I'm on his mind and he cares about me. He cares about whatever sickness I'm going through. He cares about my children. He cares about my job. He cares about my career. He cares about my life. We're living in a time now where everybody's doing their own thing, every man for himself. We're extremely narcissistic in our country and in our society. No one cares about anybody, but to know that in the midst of a crazy world that I'm still on God's mind and he hadn't forgot about me, that encourages me. He raises up prophets to speak to you to minister to you, to tell you the secrets of the Lord. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 declares, Surely the Lord God doeth nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servant the prophet. I want to talk to you about what God has been talking to me about. I believe he talks to me. I believe he ministers to me, and I believe I have a word for you. And if you listen to this word, I want you to stop doing whatever you're doing. I know you're in the kitchen. Stop. I know you're in the dining room. Stop. Just take a moment. Give God your undivided attention. He wants to speak a word into your life. He wants to change you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to give you instruction. The key to your miracle is your ability to follow instructions. John 2 and 5, whatever he tells you to do, do it. One instruction will change your life. Following one direction will cause your life to never be the same. I want you to hear this instruction. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 
and all their brethren were at their command. The Lord wants to release on you today an anointing. He wants to release on you an Issachar anointing, an Issachar grace. What kind of anointing is that, Prophet Karn? I'm going to tell you. It's an anointing to understand the times. It's an anointing that, that doesn't allow you to be ignorant of Satan's devices. You can hear him. You can tell him, don't do this, don't do that. There's a business person, you're watching me right now, and you're asking God, what is the next step in my business? There's a pastor watching me, and you're saying to the Lord, what's going on with my ministry? What's going on in my life? There's a mother, you're going through with your daughter. There's a father, you're going through with your son, and you need understanding. You do not know what to do. But that is a car anointing is ever prevalent to give you an understanding of the time. If you look at this text, there were all these tribes. You know, Israel had all of these tribes. Thousands were in the tribes. You know, you had the children of Ephraim, 20,000, 800, mighty men of valor, famous throughout the house of their fathers. You had the tribe of Manasseh, 18,000, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. You see, uh, look at verse 27. And Jeho Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites. Look at it. And with them were 3,700. But the tribe of Issachar only had 200. Now, all of these other tribes had thousands. But the tribe of Issachar only had 200. And all of the other tribes bowed down to their command, not because they were mighty, not because they were strong, not because they were great in number, but because they had understanding of the times. Can I tell you that God wants to make you the leader of your family? Because of all of Israel, bowed down to the tribe of Israel. They, they, they bowed down to the tribe of Issachar. They were at their command, all because they had understanding of the times. I want to let you know, God wants to release an anointing on you today, an anointing that will give you understanding. Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. But in all your getting, get an understanding. God wants to give you an Issachar anointing. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to minister to you because the Spirit of God said to me that there's so many people who are blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. One of the most miserable things in life is to walk around, not know your calling, not know your assignment, not know what God has called you to do. To walk in the dark, living your life from day to day, have no direction, have no instruction. Somebody watching me right now, you really don't know what's going on in your life. You just hang on a string and pray that one day God will tell you. But there's an anointing right now. You don't have to live your life on a string. You don't have to wonder whether you'll be blessed. You don't have to guess and see what to do. You're going to need the direction of God. We love to talk about the kairos. That's the timing of God. But you have topos. That's the placement of God. Not only do we need to know his timing, but we need to know where he's taking us. Where am I supposed to be? When you look in your Bible at 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, you remember when God spoke to the prophet by the name of Elijah, and the Bible talks off, and he says there's going to be no dew or no rain. But then you get to verse 2. He hears an instruction from the Lord. And the instruction is, get up, hide yourself before Jordan. And then he says, turn eastward, hide thyself by the brook of Cherith that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. For I have commanded the ravens to feed you. He was in tune with the voice of God to know this is where you're supposed to go right now. He heard his voice. The voice told him, get up. Go to the brook of Cherith. I've commanded a raven to feed you. You know that doesn't make sense? You know it doesn't make sense for a raven to feed you? 
Raven is a scavenger. It's a dirty bird. But I want to tell you, in this time and hour, God is going to cause the dirty bird, the world, the Gentiles, to feed the people of God. Those who we never thought would bless us is getting ready to bless us. Matter of fact, David said it like this in Psalm 23. He prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. Or how about this? When a man ways please the Lord, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. I want to let you know that all of the people who fault you are getting ready to bless you because God is turning the table. I feel that. God is turning the tables. I want to say that again. God is turning the tables. There's an anointing that God is going to release that's going to give you insight. Where do I go? Elijah heard, go to Cherith. I've commanded the ravens to feed you. But guess what? The brook dried up. Prophet, how do I know when it's time to move? That's how you know when the brook dries up. If the brook is dry in your life, it's time to move. If you're trying to make something work and it's not, it's time to move. Transition. How long will you mourn over Saul, saying that I have rejected him as being king? How long are you going to cry about that same situation? How long are you going to try to make something work that God said isn't going to work? I need you to understand, it's time to move. How do I know that? Because I have that it's a car anointing. That anointing lets me know it's time to move. Don't stay still. Don't, don't get complacent. Don't be like sadistical. Don't be in limbo. It's time for you to make a transition. I feel that anointing ever so prevalent here right now. I feel an anointing being released, and the Spirit of God is challenging me to challenge you to do something. And I believe if you hear God and do what he tells you to do, I believe your life will never be the same again. But I don't want you to move because I'm not done. Elijah, he hears the voice of God. Go to Cherith. He gets the Cherith. God commands ravens to feed him. But the brook dries up. And guess what the Lord says again in verse 9? Arise, go to Zarephath. For I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you. He was in tune with the voice of God to know, leave Cherith, go to Zarephath. There's someone in North Carolina, God's telling you to move to Tennessee. There's someone in Georgia, God's telling you to move to New York. There's someone in Australia, God's telling you to move to London. How about there's someone in China, God's telling you to move to Singapore. Hear his voice. But you need an Issachar anointing. An anointing for Issachar. An anointing to understand the times. An anointing investor to know when to invest. An anointing realtor to know if you should purchase the property. An anointing preacher to know if you should build that building. Should I be still or should I build the building? An anointing, sir, to know whether you should marry your wife. An anointing, ma'am, to know how to talk to your daughter. I need understanding of the times. I need to know what's going on. I personally need to know what is going on in this country because we're in a disarray. And I cannot be moved by what I see. I have to know that God is bigger than anything going on in this country right now. You must know who your source is. God wants me to minister to you. And he wants to release upon you that Issachar anointing. Understanding of the time. But here's the powerful thing. There were only 200 of them, as I told you before. But everyone bowed to them because they knew what was going on. Your family is getting ready to have your number on speed dial because you're going to have the insight for the next move. Not just your family. Your boss. Everyone connected to you is going to call you and they're going to say, hey, what am I to do? Give me instructions. Give me directions. I don't know what to do. That's how it's getting ready to get People are going to need directions. 
They're tired of just someone telling them everything's going to be all right. I need instructions. I need you to tell me what to do. I need direction. And I want you to know that he said in Psalm 37 and 4, that if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I want you to know that his word has promised you that he will not leave you comfortless, but he'll send you a paraclete, a comforter. He's going to send you someone alongside to assist you that's going to lead and that's going to guide you into all truth. I want to let you know that we need the prophet. You need the prophet in this dispensation, though there rose of change. You look in the Old Testament, God used prophets very strongly. Whenever God got ready to move his people, he raised up a prophet. Whenever God was going to deliver a nation, he raised up a prophet. Whenever God got ready to speak to his people, he raised up a prophet. You know, the priests went from the people to God. But the prophet went from God to the people to give instructions. And in the New Old Testament, we see prophets on a large scale. But then you get to the New Testament, and he says he gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. I believe we're in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Listen to him. He tells you what to do. But. He raises up the prophet to bring confirmation to what the Holy Ghost has already told you. I want to confirm that this is your season. I want to confirm that this is your year. Whatever year you're watching this, this is your year. I don't care what it looks like. You're next in line for a miracle. I don't care what the devil has told you. The enemy has told you nothing's going to happen. The enemy has told you your life is on hold. The enemy has told you nothing's going to happen. I want to prophesy and tell you that the glory of the latter house is going to be far greater than that of the former house. What you gave up is nothing compared to what you're getting ready to get in return. But God's going to send you into this next season with discernment. He's going to sing into this next season with an anointing so strong and a power and a grace and an insight that it's going to be pretty hard for the devil to trick you. You know, in my personal life, I've seen God lead and direct my life. I've been at the right place at the right time, and I've heard his voice. And God told me that it was a result of that Issachar anointing, understanding of the times and seasons. I never heard of an Issachar anointing. You know, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. I'm a southern boy. We don't use those kind of words. But as I studied my Bible, God said, read up on this a car. Because that's the grace I've given you. Understanding of the times and seasons. There's a major shift taking place in our country. And the climate is getting ready to change. Those who have been in power are getting ready to be put down. Those who have been known for a long time are getting ready to be shifted. I've had a vision very recently some drastic things happen in our country and one day I'll get to share them with you but I want to tell you this God has placed an anointing on my life and he's not a respecter of persons just like he wants to give me information and show me the times and the season he wants to give you information and show you the times and the season I can't reach your daughter I can't reach your son I never get an opportunity to meet him maybe but you can they'll listen to you they trust you. They honor the anointing on your life. They know your dedication. They know your prayer life. I'll never get to meet your husband. I never may get to come to your home. You never may come to a service, and I never may lay hands on you and prophesy and speak into your life. But the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, he doesn't tell lies. He does what he says. He means what he says. And he fulfills whatever he shows you. The Holy Ghost can tell you. And I've been sent by the Holy Ghost to challenge you. And I believe that when you honor God, there's an anointing about to be released. You're saying, prophet, you said the key to my miracle is following instructions. I want this anointing. 
What do I have to do? One instruction changes your life. You know that widow woman? The prophet went to her and said, bake me a cake. Imagine if that had hit the headlines now. You know what the headlines would say? Preacher steals money from widow. Preacher takes widow's last meal. It would be all over the news. But the prophet showed up to her house. She followed the instruction. And not only did she live, but her son lived. And everybody connected to her tapped into that blessing. All because she obeyed an instruction. Here's the instruction that I have been given by the Holy Ghost. There are 200 of you who are watching me. Just 200. The tribe of Issachar only had 200. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm only talking to 200 of you. There are 200 people right now who are saying, talk to me, man of God. Minister to me. I want this anointing. You're going to put a seed in the ground. And the seed you're going to put in the ground is going to manifest. God's getting ready to release an anointing an anointing of insight and direction where you will not be ignorant of Satan's devices. This is what the Holy Ghost told me to tell you to sow. He told me to challenge you because the scripture is 2 Chronicles 12, 32. So I want to obey the Holy Ghost. 2 Chronicles 12, 32. This is what I want you to do. Everyone watching me, I want 200 of you to sow a seed of $123.20. Somebody said, that's foolish. What am I sowing that for? You know, it, it was real foolish for Jesus to spit in the ground and put it on a man's eyes and make mud and tell him he's healed. That, that was pretty foolish. Personally, I would have been offended if Jesus spit on my eyes. But I read in my Bible that he takes the foolish things to confound the wise. God is God. I read in Psalm 115, 3, he does whatever he pleases. He's giving you an instruction. Jesus said, fill the water, pass with water. Turned into wine. Who would ever think water would taste like wine? But he's God. He doesn't make sense. The kingdom of God is backwards, if you ask me. Because America's ladder said, if you want to go up, you got to climb the ladder of success. But God said, if you want to go up, you got to go down. America says, the more money you want, save. God says, the more money you want, give. He's the opposite. He's never, he's not the status quo. It doesn't make sense, but I promise you, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. There are 200 of you. Everybody's not going to do it, but there are 200 of you. You desperately need direction. Your life is at a crossroads, and you don't know which way to turn. I'm going to pray for you, and the minute I get done praying, as soon as I get done praying, I want you to dial the number on the screen. And I want you to call in and sow immediately that seed of $123.20. Wait, 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 wait. I want to pray for you. I want that anointing to be ever so prevalent. Because when you put that seed in the ground, that anointing is getting ready to usher into your home. I feel his presence now. Father, in the name of Jesus, you gave me this word last night about Issachar. You told me that it was your desire for your people to know the times and seasons to understand what's going on. There are 200 people who are watching me. I release that anointing that is a car grace, that grace that will cause them to see things that they've never seen before. I thank you for that anointing being released now. Give them instruction in business and cause their life to never be the same. Right now, go to your phone, 
Dial that number. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Go to your phone. Dial that number. A seat of $123.20. There's somebody, your need is too big for you to just give $123. Give $1,023.20. But I want you to hear God, and I want you to move quickly under this anointing. The quicker you move, the quicker God's going to bless you. I thank God for Pastor Benny. I thank God for this ministry. My life has been changed because I obeyed the word of God and sowed a seed into this ministry. You get ready. There's an anointing coming to your house that's going to change your life. I'm excited. Go to the phone, dial that number, prepare yourself for that Issachar anointing. It's coming to you now. God bless. Jesus is going to come right to where you are. Jesus akan mendatangi saudara dimanapun saudara berada. And he will touch you. Dan dia akan mencama saudara. And he will heal you. Dan dia akan menyembuhkan saudara. You are not leaving the same person you came. Pastor Benny Hinn's miracle services in Papua, Indonesia, just a few days ago were nothing short of amazing. Huge crowds, remarkable healing testimonies, and packed altar calls for salvation marked an event called the largest gathering in Indonesia history by the local media. Jesus! Jesus! I give you my life! The anointing is so strong. I give it all over my body. For additional videos, photos, and reports from Papua, Indonesia, please visit the ministry website and stay tuned for much more from these historic services coming soon on This Is Your Day. Pastor Benny Hinn has designated Monday, September 1st as a day of prayer for debt cancellation. Send your prayer requests and sow a seed to activate harvests of supernatural debt cancellation, wealth transfer, and financial freedom. A change is coming right today. Opportunity to minister and to talk to you about what is on the mind of God. The Bible lets us know in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that I have not seen you have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10 declares, but he has revealed it by his spirit. Ephesians 4 and 11 declares, and he gave some apostles. Then he gave some prophets. Well, that's my office. That's what God has called me to be in the body of Christ. He's called me to be a prophet, to minister. What is a prophet? A prophet is that one who speaks the mind of God. He tells you what God is saying. What is the Lord saying? God doesn't want us to be ignorant of his devices, and he's raised up people in the fivefold ministry. He hasn't forgotten me. Just to know that I'm on his mind, and he cares about me. He cares about whatever sickness I'm going through. He cares about my children. He cares about my job. He cares about my career. He cares about my life. We're living in a time now where everybody's doing their own thing, every man for himself. We're extremely narcissistic in our country and in our society. No one cares about anybody, but to know that in the midst of a crazy world that I'm still on God's mind and he hadn't forgot about me, that encourages me. He raises up prophets to speak to you, to minister to you, to tell you the secrets of the Lord. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 declares, Surely the Lord God doeth nothing. But Janet, what's your name? Janet. Lift your hands. I see there is a stronghold that fights all the women in your family where they suffer from a certain condition. But the Spirit of the Lord said that condition will have no place in your life this day. All right, you healed. All right, take it. God bless On today's you. program, Brian Karn presents a prophetic word for your life as he teaches how you can activate an Issachar anointing to understand the times and seasons in these last days. Welcome to This Is Your Day. I'm so honored to be on here. My name is Prophet Brian Karn, and Pastor Benny Hinn asked me to fill in today and minister to so great a people. And it is an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity. Some people call it fivefold, others call it fourfold. Because if you're a pastor, you're a teacher, 
But I'm the prophet. I, I, I'm the prophet. I'm that prophet, that, that person to whom God has assigned to speak to you, to tell you what is on the mind of God. And I want you to know today that you are on God's mind. Jeremiah 29 11 declares, For I know my thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's to give you an expected end. No matter how confusing my life is, no matter how much distress I'm going through, to know that God has not forgotten about me, to know that he hears me. Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Just to know that he Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. On recent programs, you've witnessed the amazing prophetic anointing on the life of Brian Carn as he's given the word of the Lord to individuals in several Benny Hinn services. I see you receiving a major phone call. The last four digits are 9865. Huh? That's my phone call. That's your? My, my cell phone number. That's your cell phone number. When I just touched you, the Lord said, tell, look like I heard.